at this particular moment in time, even good things can disconnect us from a relationship with Jesus the Christ. Uh, I want to begin this message by simply stating that Jesus the Christ, Son of the living God, gives to all of us in John chapter number 15, one of his very last I am statements just before his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Jesus says in John chapter number 15, verse 1, and I quote, that I am the true vine. He says that I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman. That word husbandman means that my father is the gardener. And Jesus says that you are the branches which happens to be connected to the vine. The you that he's talking to are the disciples of Jesus. A disciple of Jesus is in fact a learner and a follower of Jesus. Those of us that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the precious gift of the Holy Spirit. Those of us that are fire baptized and on the Lord's side, Jesus says, I am the vine, my father is the gardener, and you are the branches which are connected to the vine. When Jesus says that I am the vine, what Jesus is really saying to all of us is that I am your source. Somebody shout, Jesus is my source. And because Jesus is my source, everything else that I'm chasing after is nothing more than a resource. My car is a resource. My money is a resource. My job is a resource. My home is a resource. And this is the reason you've got to stay connected to the source because resources are temporary, but Jesus, my source, is permanent. Because resources are temporary, they come one minute, and they are gone the next minute. But as long as I'm connected to the source, even when Satan steals my resources, I can get some more resources because it's the source that produces my resources. Never exchange your resource for the source. In other words, never get caught up in worshiping the gift. You ought to be worshiping the giver. Because is there anybody in here under the sound of my voice who can attest to the reality? You can be on top of the world one moment, and the very next moment the world can be on top of you. In other words, your resources have the ability to be taken away. But as long as you stay connected to the source, Jesus says you can give Get some more resources. So notice what Jesus says in John chapter number 15, verse number 1. He says, I am the vine. I am your source. My father is the gardener, and you are the branches, which happens to be connected to the vine. And he says in verse number 7, that if you abide in me, that word abide means to remain. Somebody shout remain. He says, if you remain in me and my word remains in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Now, in John chapter number 15, verse 1, he says, I am the vine and he teaches us to connect to him. He tells us to connect to him because he says we are the branches. But in John chapter number 15, verse number 7, Jesus indicates that I don't just want you to get connected. I want you to stay connected. The problem with many of us is not that we are not connected to Jesus. The problem with many of us, we have a hard time staying connected to Jesus. So notice what Jesus says in John 15 and 7. He says, if you abide in me, he says, if you remain in me, in other words, I don't just want you to to get connected to the church, I want you to remain inside of the church. I don't just want you to get connected to my word, I want you to remain inside of my word. He says, I don't just want you uh, to get connected through prayer. He says, I want you to remain close to me in prayer. If you abide in me, if you remain in me, and my word abide and remain in you, he says, here's the benefit. You can ask whatever you will, according to verse number eight, for God's glory, and he he says, God will give it unto you. What that says to all of us, ladies and gentlemen, is that Jesus does not just want us to get connected. He wants us to stay connected. Somebody shout, stay connected to Jesus. 
What does that have to do with tonight's text in Luke chapter number 10? In Luke chapter number 10, we are introduced to two friends of Jesus by the name of Mary and Martha. These are two friends of Jesus. These are great women of God, but although they are great women of God, one of them is connected to Jesus. The other one is disconnected to Jesus. Is there anybody in here who knows that you can be a great man of God, you can be a great woman of God, but no matter how great you are, it does not mean that you are uh, connected to Jesus. What amazes me is not that one of them is disconnected, but what amazes me is that it's nothing bad that disconnects her. It is something good that disconnects her. Peep the text. I'm in Luke chapter number 10, verses 38 through 42. Jesus comes to the home of Martha. Mary, her sister, is inside of the house. And when Jesus gets inside of the house, they are excited to see Jesus. Mary is so excited to see Jesus that she sits at his feet and spends time with Jesus. Martha is so excited to Jesus that she starts working on behalf of Jesus. So the Bible declares, hear this clearly, ladies and gentlemen, that Mary is spending time with Jesus, but Martha is working working for Jesus. And while she's working for Jesus, she gets mad at her sister Mary because Martha is in the kitchen fixing Jesus' food. She's making sure that the macaroni is hot. She's making sure that the collard greens are just right. She's making sure that his water has ice with lemon. And she gets absolutely upset because while she's busy working on behalf of Jesus, her sister is sitting at the feet of Jesus and she goes to Jesus. She says, hold up for a second. My sister ain't doing nothing. And Jesus says back to Martha, it looks like your sister is doing nothing, but she's chosen the more needful thing, and the more needful thing is to be inside of my presence. Now Martha is a great woman of God. Mary is a great woman of God, but Mary, a great woman of God, is sitting at the feet of Jesus. Martha, a great woman of God, is so busy that she doesn't have any time to spend with Jesus. So here it is. On one hand, she's a mighty woman of God, but on the other hand, she's still disconnected. What amazes me is not that she's disconnected because she's not spending time with Jesus, but what amazes me is that it's nothing bad that disconnects her. She is not disconnected because of a sexually immoral lifestyle. She's not disconnected because she's a liar. She's not disconnected because she is an adulterer. She's not disconnected because she bears false witness, but she's disconnected because she allows herself to get so busy that she doesn't have any time to spend with Jesus. And is there anybody in here who's ever had a Martha complex? Sometimes the busyness of life can disconnect us from spending time with Jesus. Sometimes I can get so busy on the job, and sometimes I can get so busy doing this, and sometimes I can get so busy doing that, and sometimes I can get so busy going here and going over there that I fail to spend time with Jesus. Sometimes it is not the bad things that disconnect me. Sometimes it is the good things that have the potential to disconnect me from Jesus. So the first thing that we see inside of the text is that sometimes even good things can disconnect me from fellowship with Jesus. Everybody repeat after me, sometimes. Even good things have the potential to disconnect me from fellowship with Jesus. Now, God is not against us having something good because after all, the Bible declares that every good and perfect gift comes from above. But when a good gift becomes bad, it disconnects us from Jesus. So the question has to be raised, how can my good gift become a bad gift? My good gift becomes a bad gift when it stands in the way of me spending time with Jesus. In other words, when I don't have anything, I'm connected to Jesus. 
Jesus. When I don't have anything, I'm praying to God like never before. When I don't have anything, I'm reading his word like never before. When I don't have anything, I'm crying out to God. I'm in church every time the doors are open. But the moment that God blesses me, he takes a chance on me. Because God has to figure or not, has to figure out whether or not when I bless you, are you going to allow your blessing to get between me and you, or are you still going to stay connected? Look at the person beside you and tell them, I need for you to stay connected. Go ahead and tell them, tell them, tell them, I need, that was the wrong person. I need you to find somebody else who's not as stuck up as that previous person. Tell them, I need for you to stay connected. As I'm teaching this message on tonight, I want you to examine, I want you to examine what good thing in my life is disconnecting me from Jesus. What good thing in my life is keeping me from having a closer walk and a closer relationship with Jesus. Here's the second thing that we see inside of the text. Serving people without spending time with Jesus who gives us the power to serve in the first place leads to burnout. Everybody repeat after me. When I serve other people but fail to spend time with Jesus, it is not long until I burn out. I want to give you this analogy. Last night, I was driving somebody else's car, and they warned me that there was no gas inside of the tank. Uh, but I'm driving the car, and I did not check the gauge, and I was going to preach last night. And on my way back from going to preach, I noticed that it was getting empty. I noticed that it was getting empty, but ladies and gentlemen, I told myself I can make it just one more mile. If I could just make it one more mile, I promise I'm going to take the next exit. And then that exit came, and then I said I could make it one more mile. And then I tried to take the next exit, and I ran out of gas on the freeway. Somebody just missed it. I'm going to say it again. I, I ran out of gas on the freeway. Why did I run out of gas? Because when you fill your tank with gas, you can keep going and going and going, but if you never stop at the gas station to fill back up, you can push all you want to, but if you don't have the gas inside of the tank, pretty soon you're going to burn out. So many of you are looking at me crazy and looking at me strange because you think I'm talking about a car and I'm talking about you. Because how many of us are in church and we are serving God here, serving God there, and you think you can go one more day without spending time with God. You think that you can go one more Wednesday without getting inside of the Word. You think that you can go one more Sunday without being in corporate worship. You think that you can go one more day without feeding your spiritual soul. And you say, I could just make it one more day. It ain't going don't hurt nobody and before you know it people are pulling on you on your job people are pulling on you inside of your house and you're serving other people and while you are serving other people you think I got just a little bit more left inside of the tank and before you know it you are put putting along in life and you experience burnout inside of your life because you don't have any more spiritual gas inside of your soul come as somebody when you serve people without spending time with Jesus it leads to burnout when I serve people I'm spending gas when I serve people I'm pouring out the people but hear this clearly when I spend time with Jesus I'm stopping at the gas station and he's pouring back into me now you can't uh, pass through the gas station and expect to get the fill up but in order for you to get filled you gotta stop at the gas station it's a whole lot of people passing through the church but you ain't stopping at the church you always checking your watch when we getting ready to get out of here you always checking your watch when we getting ready to go home but is there anybody in here who knows I can't pass through the church I gotta stop at the church because this is my source for a fill up I think you to high five your neighbor and tell them this is my source for a fill up such is the case in the text. Watch this. Uh, Martha is serving, but she's not spending time with Jesus. And the telltale sign that she has burnout, she got a stank attitude. 
What do I do when I'm serving in the church? And I love God. You don't love God? What's wrong with you? But before long, because I'm serving and I'm not spending any time with Jesus, I'm a good person at heart. But every now and again, I say some mean stuff because I got a stink attitude. It's not that I'm mean. It's not that I'm trying to be rude. I'm just burnt out. I need to go home and sit down somewhere and stop trying to serve. And you feel guilty for sitting down. But you don't have to feel guilty for sitting down. Sometimes you got to check yourself out of the game and say, Pastor Beavers, I need a substitute. Sit me on the bench for a while because I'm on the verge of burning out. Notice what happens. Luke chapter number 10, verse 40. Martha was cumbered about with much serving. That word cumbered means she was busy. She was busy serving. She was busy working for Jesus. And came to Jesus, and this is how I know she got a staying attitude. She said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Don't you see all that I'm doing, all these ministries I serve on, and she ain't doing nothing? Tell her, therefore, to come unto me so she can help me. Isn't it amazing when you are burnt out, you point out what everybody else ain't doing and everything that you think you're doing. And you don't even realize that when you serve people without spending time with Jesus who gives you the power to serve in the first place, it leads to burnout. Here's the last thing. Put it up so everybody can see it. By the way, I want you to text NRS Church to 22333 and I want you to fire those questions away. Sometimes the cares of this world whether they be good or whether they be bad, and even the troubles of this world can disconnect us from Jesus. And whenever I'm disconnected, I experience burnout. Sometimes the cares of this world, whether they be good or whether they be bad, and even the troubles of this world can disconnect us from Jesus. Elbow the person beside you one more time. Tell them stay connected. Notice how Jesus answers Martha in Luke chapter number 10, verse 41. Uh, Jesus answered and said unto her, uh, Martha, Martha. He didn't just call her name one time. He called her name twice. Her attitude is so stank that she don't even hear him the first time he calls her. If her attitude was in check, she would have heard him the first time. You ever call somebody and they weren't even listening, so you had to call them again? You had to say their name more than one time, and you had to say it louder the second time than you did the first time? That, that's what's going on inside of the text. Jesus says, Martha, she don't hear, Martha, Martha, boo-boo, <laughs> has to get his attention. You are careful, careful, the root word of careful is care. You care about many things. He says, not only do you care about many things, you are troubled about many things. And she didn't even realize that the cares of this world, whether they be good, whether they be bad, and even the troubles of this world can disconnect us from Jesus. She's, Jesus is saying to her, the reason you're disconnected is because you're worried about stuff you can't control. The cares of this world. He says, the reason you were disconnected uh, is not just because of the cares of this world, but because of the troubles of this world. And the question I want to ask to all of us on tonight is what good thing is disconnecting us from Jesus? Why are you so tired all the time? Why your attitude so bad all the time? You speak to the people at church and won't even speak to the people inside of your own house. You come to church, how you doing? Praise the Lord. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. And you wake up in the morning, your spouse speak to you, you just groan. Mm. <laughs> good morning. Don't seem like a good morning to me. That's because you're burnt out. And many of us are dressed up on the outside, but we are burnt out on the inside. And what God is saying to all of us is that I don't just want you to be connected. I want you to stay connected. But in order for you to stay connected, never allow the blessings of God, which are meant to be good, to turn into a bad thing and stand between you and God. Because anytime my blessings become curses, I disconnect myself from God and it is not long until I experience burnout. Let the church shout amen. Amen again. One more time for the Holy Spirit. I want you to text NRS Church to 22333. Text NRS Church to 22333. 
and I want you to fire those questions away. We ready? Yeah, we ready. Let's first, get it. First question. What's best, worship or work? Both. You can't have one without the other. Uh, worship puts fuel inside of my tank, uh, but at the same time, the fuel inside of my tank is meant to be poured out to be a blessing to somebody else. Uh, and I believe that the problem with the church is that we attempt to specialize in one of them. And whenever you specialize in one of them, you become off balance. So if I'm only working and I'm not worshiping, I experience burnout. Because when I work, I pour out the people, but when I worship, Jesus pours uh, back into me. But if I'm only worshiping and I'm not working, can you imagine a church that only worships but does not work? If the building burns down, the community does not even miss them. Because we worship inside of the sanctuary and we leave here talking about we have good church, but our community is still in shambles. So watch this. When I come to church to worship, I am to take the energy, the inspiration, and the information that I get inside of the sanctuary, take it outside of the four walls of the sanctuary, and put that energy, that inspiration, and that information to use inside of my life in order to be a blessing to somebody else. So in short, we need both. Amen. God gives each of us talents. How do we determine which one you have? God gives all of us talents. How do we determine which one we have? Everybody shout next steps. I said shout it. Y'all said it. Everybody shout next steps. Shameless plug. The next next steps classes are this Saturday, 10 a.m. right here at the start. You would be surprised. There are so many people in the body of Christ who do not know their purpose. Have you not considered how amazing and how difficult it would be if your hand on your body didn't know that it was a hand and it thought that it was a foot? If your foot on your body didn't know that it was a foot and it thought that it was a hand, wouldn't it be crazy if you were trying to walk on your hands? And wouldn't it be crazy if you were trying to pick up things with your feet? And so many people in the body of Christ, hear this clearly, are out of place because they do not know their purpose and they do not even know where to start. So every Sunday you hear me say, I want to take you from sitting to what? From sitting to what? All right, but I don't just want you to serve where there is a need. I want you to serve where you are gifted. I don't want to fill a position just because there's a need. I want to put a gifted person in a position that matches the gift and the skill set that God has given them. And all of us have gifts. So the question is, how do I discover my gifts? In the next steps class, the entire four steps is designed to help you discover your purpose. The entire four steps is designed to help you discover your gift. So in that third step, you're going to take a spiritual gifts analysis. And when you take that spiritual gifts analysis, watch this, it will highlight certain gifts that you have that God has given you. And according to, to the gifts that you have, according to the test that you take, watch this, you end up serving where you are gifted. So long story short, a great place to start is next steps. Everybody say next steps. Next step. This, Saturday, this Saturday, 10 a.m. At, at the star. All right. My, my gift is to be a great singer, lead singer. Great singer? Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I thought I could sing too. I can sing real good till I get this mic on. I just, then I have to mouth the words because people might hear me then. I, I, I be singing on the front row, but when I get up here, I just. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, next question. How can we encourage someone in the church that may feel burnout spiritually? How can we encourage someone in the church that may feel burned out spiritually? Uh, do not make them feel guilty for wanting to take a break. 
All right. One of the major reasons why people keep going inside of the church uh, is because we make people feel guilty for saying, I think I need to sit down for a while. Uh, but if you want to encourage somebody, create an atmosphere where they can uh, take a break. Uh, we can also encourage people when more volunteers jump on the team. Uh, because right now, 20% of the people are carrying 80% of the load. So I want to take a break, but at the same time, I care about the work getting done. So what happens when I need to take a break and I want to take a break, but me taking a break, I don't have anybody else to put in my place because we got a whole lot of people sitting and they are content with sitting and they feel like the church don't need them. They doing fine without me and you don't even realize there are other people who are working behind the scenes in order to help make these things happen that you don't even know. Watch this and they're on the verge of burnout. So we need new volunteers to step up. I believe that would encourage our current volunteers. I need some new people to go through next steps this Saturday. I need some new people to jump on the team. Also, do not make people feel guilty for needing to take a break. Think about a sports event. When you go home tonight, you're going to watch basketball, uh, and not everybody is going to play the whole game. Some people are going to play until they get tired, and when they get tired, the coach is going to recognize it, and he's going to pull them out the game. So guess what? The reason he pulls them out of the game, because no matter how gifted they are, you are not helping me when you're tired. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? All right. I like that. You like that? I like that. Oh, all right. Well, how do you, re how you, excuse me, how do you recover from burnout? Yeah, just sit for a while. Uh, just sit in worship. Uh, taking a break don't mean stop coming to church. I want to clarify that. <laughs> I want to clarify that. <laughs> All right? Taking a break does not mean stop coming to church. But just come to church and sit for a while. Come to church and just be in the atmosphere. Come to church and just worship. Uh, ask that question again. How do you recover from burnout? Yeah, come to church and just sit for a while. Uh, and then also, uh, you can get on top of burnout before you ever burn out just by making sure. Because watch this. When I come to church, this should not be the only time that I'm in God's presence. Uh, but every day I ought to have a set, quiet time with God and begin my day with God where I'm reading God's word uh, and begin my day with God uh, where I'm talking to God in prayer. And it is in that quiet time that God feels me. So watch this. Many people think that I can recover just by taking a vacation. But you can take a vacation and come back and be even more tired than you were before you took that vacation. Because it is not just the rest and the relaxation that's going to help you recover. It's being in the presence of Jesus that's going to help you recover. That's right. Amen. Amen. Um, next question here. What should you do when you are not given the opportunity to serve in the area where you're gifted in? Uh, should Somebody, you, it's the same question for last week. I don't know. It's a good one. Though. All right, ask it again. Uh, what should you do when you're, when you're not given the opportunity to serve in the area you're gifted in? Should you leave said church? Said church? Yeah, said church. <laughs> should you leave the church? Were they signing off on that? No, it's kind of like when you leave that church. So they're saying said church. They was just, it's just another name of not saying the church name, so they said said church. Oh, okay. Would you leave the star? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what do I do when I'm gifted in a certain area and I'm not given an opportunity to serve? The question has to be raised, why are you not being given the opportunity. Uh, have you submitted yourself uh, to the process, number one? Uh, have you gone through next steps? Because a lot of people want to come to church, uh, and the fact that you come to church, you want to jump right in and start serving, but you don't know the history of the church. You don't know our core values. You don't know our mission. You don't know our vision. Uh, you don't have the heart of the church. Have you submitted yourself to the process? If you have not submitted yourself to the process, do not expect to just jump right in and start serving. Second question, all right, if you submit yourself to the process, you jump on the team, did you show up to practice? Or did you just show up to game time on Sunday? I'm here, put me in. It don't work like that. Tell the person beside you it don't work like that. 
All right, third question I want to ask is not just did you show up to practice, uh, but are you really gifted in the area you think that you're gifted in? Uh, because oftentimes we think that we're gifted in an area, uh, and we may be, but we may not be gifted in that area. And this is how you know. When I'm doing what I do, do people enjoy it or do they endure it? All right, I'm going to ask that question again. When I'm doing what I do, do people enjoy it or do they endure it? Uh, are they looking at their watch uh, when I finish saying, man, I can't believe it's over? Or are they looking at their watch while I'm doing what I'm doing saying, oh, I wish they'd sit down. It's taking too long. All right, so you have to ask yourself those questions. Uh, if you filter through those questions um, and, and you determine that this is your gift, uh, and, and you've submitted yourself to the process and you're still not allowed to serve, uh, at that point begin to talk to Jesus about where you are really supposed to be. Talk to Jesus about where you are really supposed to be. You don't know why God is allowing you to sit for this season. Uh, he could be allowing you to sit because he's working on something inside of you, or he could be allowing you to sit for another reason. But talk to God. And then whatever God lays upon your heart, then do it. If he tells you to stay, then stay. But if he tells you to leave, then leave. Because guess what? There's no lack in the body of Christ. One place may have all that they need, but it's another place that needs your gift. And every church is on the same team. Amen. Next question. What did Jesus do when experiencing burnout? Jesus oftentimes early in the morning, everybody say early in the morning, Jesus would climb to a high mountain and spend some alone time with his father. For instance, in Matthew chapter number 14, verses 22 through uh, 33, Jesus sends his disciples ahead of him to the other side, uh, other sea by ship. Uh, and Jesus is not in the ship. And the reason he sends them ahead is because he climbs to a high mountain early in the morning to spend some alone time with his father. Before he sends them ahead, Jesus has been healing all day. He's been ministering all day. And Jesus is tired. In his humanity, he's tired. So what does he do when he's tired? He gets away from everybody, even his close disciples. He sends them away, climbs up to a high mountain to spend some alone time with his father. So what do I do? How did Jesus handle burnout? He handled burnout by getting into the presence of his father. And that's the same thing that we should do as well. We'll take one more question. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to read part of this question because I think it's good, but I can't see the end of it. But I'm going to start here. When your husband works 14 straight days and he wants you to spend time with him uh, the week he is off, I feel bad if I come to Bible study. When your husband works 14 straight. 14 straight days, he wants you to spend time with him. When he's off. When he's off. <laughs> okay, say it again. All right. When your husband works 14 days straight and he wants to spend time, he wants you to spend time with him the week he is off, I feel bad if I come to Bible study. What kind of job does he have? It doesn't say. It don't say. Yeah. Um, you should never feel pressure uh, to come to Bible study, or you should never feel pressure to stay at home. Uh, whatever you choose to do, you got to have peace inside of your heart. Do you hear what I'm saying? Uh, we know that we come to Bible study to get information uh, that we might be able to fight the wiles, the schemes, and the tricks of Satan. Uh, but at the same time, I don't never want you to feel like I have to be here. This is not a have to. It is a get to. All right? It is a get to. Uh, at the same time, uh, you shouldn't feel like I have to be home either. Uh, because if that's your husband, uh, being at home is not a have to, but it is a get to. So whatever decision you make, Make sure that you have peace inside of your heart. Does everybody hear what I'm saying? Make sure that you have peace inside of your heart. Now, my question is, uh, the other two weeks, which includes 14 days, were you in Bible study then? All right. 
Because because once I get that, then I can get to the real motive of why you asking what you are asking. Because uh, some people can use that as an excuse. Well, you know, somebody's working and they want me to spend time with me, uh, time with them, so I'm not going to come. Uh, and then somebody can legitimately be here all the time and say, hey, tonight I'm going to take a break and I'm going to spend time uh, with somebody I don't get to see that often. Those are two totally different things, and only you and God know the answer to that. All right? Let the church shout amen. 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 Come on and put your hands together.